Hello, my name is Chen Alan Duncan, and I'm a guide here at Entebbe Zoo. Uh, still, also a guide working with one of the one of the tour companies called the Badas Lens. Okay, so as I speak right now, we are in uh, Entebbe Zoo, commonly known commonly known as Entebbe Zoo, but initially it is UWE, Uganda Wildlife Conservation Education Center. Okay. So uh, we are starting off with our very first animal, which is typically unique as well. Uh, just right down there, those are cheetahs. We actually have two cheetahs. There is one over there. The second one is just right under the mango tree. So cheetahs happens to be the the fastest land mammal that we have across the world on land, basically, and. Uh, it having the fastest, we, we can see it very well. We in Uganda we can only find them in only one place in Uganda, that is northeastern part of Uganda, a, a, a game reserve called Pian Upe. Pian Upe is where you can find these animals. Uh, so that's why they actually named one of them is Pian, the female here, and Upe over there is called, that is the male one. Okay. So cheetahs here we normally give them meat in a captive setting. We normally give them meat. We normally give them around six six kilograms of meat each and every day which is uh, basically that's what we normally feed them with and um, and for them to exercise sometimes you see them chasing around the squirrels uh, that enter in there which is actually a very very good thing we are so uh, uh, happy that uh, we have one of them here basically most people don't know the difference between a cheetah and a leopard when you are to look at this cheetah over here it actually has spots spots on the body. Not only spots, when you look at its face, it has what we call a tear mark. The, back, the black line running from the eyes to the mouth. Okay? So, you are visiting Uganda, it literally means you can see this not only in a captivity, but also in the natural settings. And that is Pian Upe Game Reserve. Okay? So, um, we are going to see another animal. And uh, please, you can go. Here it is our second exhibit and we are having here what we call a Cape Buffalo. A Cape Buffalo happens to be one of the big fives that we have in, in Uganda. And the Cape Buffaloes that we have here, there are literally only four. But however, this one thing you should know a fact about it, that these are the one of the animals that have killed more human beings than any other animal. The second actually after a hippopotamus. So you can actually find them in, they more look like cows. In fact, there are other countries that they normally eat, take their milk. But here in Uganda, the main challenge they are facing is people are eating them, knowing that they are like domestic animals. But still, they are very aggressive. In the world, when you see them, you'll find them, you can see they are doing some little bit of aggressiveness. But in the world, when you see them, they live in a group. A group is called a herd. In their herd, you'll always find over, um, over 100 to, over to 200 uh, buffalo, but the difference is a dominant male when he's always kicked out of the tribe. What will happen is uh, it will become solitary, it will be alone. That literally means it will become very, very aggressive. So, that solitary buffalo, in case it is to knock you, a deer, you might face it up hmm. because they knock to kill. Okay, however, here they're in a captivity and they always give them grass that's what we can see a truck enters in it gives them grass and um and uh, and that's what they eat just like cows the second animal which is always next to to these buffaloes are the other white birds you can see right over in the background those are called the cattle egrets why cattle egrets they are always associated to these cattle removing ticks from them that's what they normally do oh. that's what we call mutual relationships oh. they are relationships that they have with these birds. Ah, their one is over there. Yeah, so yeah. it's trying to look for a tick. So you always see these birds, cattle egrets. In Uganda here, locally we know them as Nyange. That's why we always hear a song. Nyange, yeah, Nyange, Nyange, da, Nyange. Some, something like that. Mm. Because they are trying to remove yeah. the ticks. You can see I them. think that one is already coming. Yes. Then the second uh, bird, which is slightly unique, are these ones here. That you call. Egyptian geese. When you look at Egyptian geese, 
just like the name suggests, Egyptian geese. They are migratory birds that come from all of the, in, the initially from Egypt, but they migrate from Egypt to Uganda, from Uganda to other countries. So they actually migrate that long distance. So you'll always see them here because Uganda is a very sweet country where you can actually uh, the environment is typically very good for them. That's why you'll always find them all season throughout. You always find the Egyptian geese. Okay, locally we know it as Mbata Kabuzi. Mm. That is how we know them. Okay, they look like uh, a duck. Yes, they look like ducks, like the ducks that we normally have at home. That's why actually there are people that are eating these birds, mm. which we, as the Ugandans, we actually we forbid that eating these birds because the more you eat them, they'll get uh, they'll get extinct. Mm. Okay, but as I speak right now, at least they are least concerned. There are quite many in the wild. Mm. So this is what we can always find wow. in the zoo. Do you know it's it's my first time seeing that bird. Oh. <laughs> okay. So we shall always be seeing them. Yeah. No worries. As we can venture and we see more, we shall always be seeing these Egyptian geese named Bata Kabuzi. And then the other one is. Oh, the other one that uh, those are the, the guinea, fowl. guinea fowls. Specifically, they are known as helmeted guinea fowls. We have species of Uganda up to three species of guinea fowl. These are oh. specifically. Helmeted guinea fowls. Oh, okay. because of the that helmet. They have some on on the head. There. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Did you know that Uganda has eleven percent of the wild birds in Uganda? Eleven percent of the wild percent of the wild bird. Yes. I, I didn't know okay. that. So as we continue, we shall always see birds in our next episodes. If God really wish, we shall see also. We might go to the park and see uh, unique birds. Others are endemic to Uganda, like the rift valleys of Uganda. Mm. Others you can find them in an open savanna like this. Mm. So, we shall always be seeing them. So, wow. I venture you, let's go and see another unique animal. Okay. In the background there, we are having uh, a roar of a lion. This is a zoo, so we can hear. You know, roars of a lion are always in the um, very early in the morning and late in the evening. But why does it roar? Around, we are hearing it. Why are we hearing it? Something is happening which we want to find out. So whenever it roars, something is wrong? Not necessarily something is wrong, it is just a form of communication. Oh, yes. that's how they communicate? That's how they communicate, through a roar. We are almost there. Oh, so, here we are. They are having up to around uh, 15 lions, mm. of which the ones that are roaring are oh, right... Oh, okay, I can see them in the cage. Yes, are right inside. So out of the 15 lions, we have uh, three males, three big males. Mm. Then the, the others are, are young. But however, today, it being uh, the visitor number is relatively low on a Monday like this. That's why you see some cubs oh. right down there. Those are the cubs. The cubs are the young ones. The cubs, yes, the cubs are the young ones. Blind. The cubs and the mother are the one on the other side. Okay? So what they normally feed with these lions with mm. is basically meat. Around 6 to 10 kilograms. Per meat. each? Yes, per lion. Per lion. Each 6 to 10. Others will eat 6, others will eat like 8, 9, especially the male ones and the elder ones. Mm. Okay? However, in Uganda... They eat raw? Yes, raw meat. Raw meat. From it. However, in Uganda, there are only three national parks where you can find this name. The one which is unique to Uganda is found in Queen Elizabeth National Park. That's where you can find three climbing lions. Tree climbi tree three climbing, three climbing, climbing lions. In a Uganda. tree climbing lion. Yes, I've so never heard of that before. Yes, that's what we have in Uganda, and uh, you also find it in Ishasha sector because you have sectors in Queen Elizabeth. Where you can find those national, where you can find those tree climbing lions. Mm. Just like you can see. Uh, a lot of students are coming by also to, to have a glance of these of these lions. Mm. So um, the other national park where you can find them is Maxon Falls National Park. You can find as well lions, and then the very last one is Kidepo Valley National Park. That is around uh, eight to nine hours away from from Kampala. Kidepo. Queen Elizabeth and Maxon Falls National Park. That's where you can find the lions. All right. Yeah. I think the men maybe.
It was even susuring. So that is uh, what we call black and white colobus monkey. Why it's called black and white colobus monkey? It's um, colobus means four digits. So when you look at it, the in front palm has four. One, two, three, four. It doesn't have the thumb. That's why it's called colobus. And the only species we have in Uganda is that. That is black and white colobus monkey. And uh, it's more of its leaves. Leaves, that's the main thing that all this. And you always find them on top of the trees. In Uganda, you always find them in forested areas. For example, the institution here is more of next to forest. Okay? Semliki, uh, Semliki, you can also find them. Semliki Valley National Park. But however, in Uganda, the main challenge they are facing is we have cultures in Uganda that they are using their, um, their skin for cultural dance. Okay? For example, the, the Imbalu, people coming from Mbale. I'm mm. sure maybe you saw the, next, the previous episodes about uh, Mbale, Mbalu, Mbalu, Mbalu dance and how people use it for, 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 for dance. So this is the one that normally use the skin. People normally kill it, uh, skin it, and they use their skin for the cultural dance. Same thing with another tribe in Uganda that is called people coming from the northern part of Uganda, Gulu, the Acholis. Mm. They also use their skin for the cultural dance. Okay. Do do they? You say they only eat leaves. Do, do mainly. Mainly. Eat oh. Most of their diet because I know monkey with banana. Yes, they can also <laughs> eat bananas, but uh, the most uh, most the high percentage of their diet is comprised of leaves. Okay. Then there is something unique just behind you, somewhere. Oh. The the other one looks like dead. That is not dead. That is what we call uh, that is what a, a process that is called uh, basking. You know, crocodiles are, are reptiles, and they are cold-blooded animals. Cold-blooded literally means they depend on external external environment to regulate their body temperatures. So they don't have sweat glands like the human beings. As human beings, we have sweat glands. We normally sweat through our skin, but for them, they, for them to release heat. They have to use their mouth when they open their mouth so that they can release excess heat. So that's what the other one is doing. That's why you're seeing it's opening the mouth. But myth mythically, Ugandans or Africans perceive it that they are attracting flies, mm. which is not true. I will ask you to look for a fly that is next to the mouth. Believe me, you will not see any fly. Yeah, there is no fly. Okay? So uh, in some days, when they want to re regulate their body, body temperature without opening the mouth, they will enter the water. That is another way how they can reduce their body temperatures. That's why there is water where yes, there. That is why there is water here. And in the in in, the, in Uganda, you can always find them in Kazinga Channel. Kazinga Channel is that side of Queen Elizabeth National Park, mm. where you can find the thousands and thousands of crocodiles. Okay, here it is in the captivity, but in the wild you can find the thousands. And and uh, we are having they also having that challenge of human to human to wildlife conflict. You can find someone is going to swim, then they go with someone's limbs. But however, as a tourist, when you're coming, you are literally very safe. Why am I saying you're safe? One, you're in a big boat and you're not expected to, to jump into the water because, believe me, you'll be eaten. But believe me, it has never eaten any tourist. Why? Because we are, we are, we, you gotta be safe. We're in a boat, a big boat, and nothing is going to happen. Okay? So. This is what we call spotted necked otters. Very good at swimming, you can actually see how it is swimming okay uh it could actually do this the whole day swimming the whole day because this is what it is good at okay basically in uganda you'll always find them in freshwater bodies for example lake victoria we are going to see lake victoria in a few minutes from now so this is what we call spotted neck otters in uganda we have two species of spotted neck otters that is this one here i mean sorry species of otters which is spotted neck otters and giant otters but in Uganda, we only have this very one species. Okay, so in freshwater bodies, you'll always see them eating fish. That is what they basically eat: fish, fish, fish. Okay, and here we give them fish. However, they will still eat around five percent of their body weight. That literally means I don't mean they eat themselves. No, if their kilogram is twenty kilograms, that literally means they will eat five percent of the twenty kilograms. So here, basically, we normally give them 
bit. I mean, sorry, fish on a daily basis. Okay. So, so this this pool has has fish. No, it doesn't have fish, but we provide. They just so the you we normally fish, uh, fresh fish. Fresh fish. Yeah. Fresh fish. Okay, you can see how it's swimming. So in case you really want to learn how to swim, this is a very free <laughs> lesson for you. Yeah. Free and no charge. It's, it's it's coming out. Yes, it is. You can see the foot very well. Come and see the foot. It doesn't, but it's already scared. The foot is actually has a web foot, so that literally means it helps it. Um, it helps it to to swim easily with the web foot. So just like I said before, it in locally we know it as monge. So we have clans in Uganda that mm. respect this animal so so much. Why? Because uh, they believe they came from this this uh, and this uh, this uh, this animal here, this otters. That's why you never see oh. them put any harm in it. You'll always respect it, and even they have names that names that predict this um this animal here the spotted neck turtle there it is see the web foot mm. okay. oh. and you see the the the, the, the 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 white spots on the neck yeah 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 that's where the name comes from spotted neck turtles. it has four one on only two feet uh, the other is behind they are not here. it can't come i know it will not come Still enjoying itself, it can come. Okay, so uh, after swimming the whole day, it will come and sleep on the barrels. That's why it sleeps. It doesn't sleep in the water, it sleeps in the holes. Those holes you see from there. That's where it sleeps. Yeah. But it can it can it can go under the water for some time. Yes, for some time. And yet I can see it has nose. Yes, it has nose for for, for basically uh, breathing. You can see it, it goes in, then breathes. So it can hold breath for a very long time. Not, not quite long, like for around the five seconds. No, uh, there is one that is yeah, still two. inside. It's only one. It's only one. Hey, it's only <laughs> one which is here. It's only one. Only that is just good at swimming. You can see. Ah, uh, there you go. Then it moves that case for oxygen. Comes, goes in again. It's one. Oh, wow. Hmm? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, what we call African forest cobra. You know, we have very many species of forest cobra. I mean, species of cobras. Mm. And this specifically is forest cobra. Just like the name suggests forest. So they are always very common in forested areas. Okay, so you'll always see them. But the thing with them is they are literally very, very venomous, extremely venomous. Okay, they have a, a because we have very many uh, types of venom. We have what we call neurotoxic and cytotoxic, ectotoxic, and so many. But specifically, this one has what we call neurotoxic. Neurotoxic it means it will affect your nervous system. It comes from the word neurons. Okay, so when you see them, they have uh, neurons. That means it will affect your nervous system. You are not able to move. Your limbs, your, like your legs, your, your hands, you're not able to talk. He, at some point, because of fear, you also have diarrhea. That is what it means by neurotoxin. So, uh, when it bites you, you will have around between 30 to 1 hour. Without you going to a hospital within that given time, believe me, you will kick a bucket. Why? This snake is very, very venomous. Okay? We are going to see another. Uh, species of snakes. Actually, where you can find this, just like I told you, forested areas. Mm. Okay, so we have, as you can see, a little forest within here, and also in the parks, where the forest, you always see it. Even in swamps, you can find this. Okay? There is another one here. Maybe you can just follow me. Can we do this? Oh, yeah. This over here. This is what we call uh, African rock python. African rock python is literally non-venomous. Non-venomous, I mean, it doesn't have venom. Okay, but what normally does it does what we call constriction. In fact, I never told you this is the largest snake in Africa, the biggest snake in Africa, but the second in the world. Okay, so what we normally do, they, you can see right in there. You, you can see right in there. There are more right in there. I don't know if you can literally see it very well. It is under that uh, yes. that that rock. Yes. Then there are more eggs in there. 
Oh, those are their eggs? Yes, those are their eggs. Okay. So within some periods, they will actually hatch and they will, they will have new babies. So this is what we normally give them here in the, in the, in the, in the zoo, in the U.S. We normally give them uh, uh, chicken. So they will give them around one chick, one big chicken after two weeks. After two weeks? Yes, after two weeks. Remember their digestive system is literally very, very slow. So when they, when they swallow, they start digesting it. Slowly, slowly. Actually, all the doctors. I never told even the crocodiles. Mm. They'll eat around 60 kilograms. Then they'll eat again after time. Their digestive system is different. I, I just saw something here. Uh, it's like it, it's, it's a skin. Yes. No, that is what we I found. don't know whether the viewers can see that. You can see yes. the, the that skin. Is, uh, molting, a process that snakes normally go. Oh, it's, it's called, called molting. molting process. Oh. Snakes normally molt after eating. When they eat hey. and they want to, die to expand, they mm. have to remove the skin. You can see this one is almost molting. Mm. You see from the skin mm. and also the eyes. The eyes will turn cream. The eyes, the eyes turn cream white. But the other one, the other one which is moving, that one has already molted. And it's already, you can see how... Oh, that one has already molted. Already molted. The, the second one from yes, the, the second. Side. And then this one is in the process. It's the process of molting. So this skin here is for the other one, right? Yes, it is for the other one. Wow, incredible. We can go and see the other? Yeah. Okay, now that is what you call Egyptian cobra. Egyptian cobra also happens to be among the extremely venomous snakes. Most of them they have two types of venom. Neurotoxic and cytotoxic. Cytotoxic actually means it's um cytotoxic is actually affecting your cells. So when it bites you for example in your hands here, this the, the venom is moving as it is destroying your cells. That's what I mean by neurotoxin. Okay? Cytotoxic, yeah. Mm, sorry? Neuro neurotoxic. So cytotoxic, it affecting your cells. That is cytotoxic. Okay. Mm. When we spoke about was neurotoxic. Yeah. Okay. So this is the what kind of venom these snakes have. Okay. However, besides these snakes here, we also have other snakes like the spitting cobras. Specifically, the ones we have in Uganda is black necked spitting cobra. Now that one is so accurate. We don't have it here, but uh, probably we shall see it afterwards. That one is spits on your eyes. So accurate that you can raise up and spit in your eyes. Okay, that is how it defends itself. But in fact, it can also bite. Okay, so these snakes specifically here, they are also given, they are given chicks, young ones, of chicken. That is what they are given from here. But in the um, in the wild, where you see them, they will always find them looking for mice, they rats. Look for rats. Those are the kind of things they look for because those things that they eat, those kind of mice, they have a lot of proteins. Because when they eat proteins, they can easily um, come up with venom. You know, venom helps them to easily hunt and digest digest uh, 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 their prey. Okay, that's why they always look for those highly proteined animals, including frogs. I tell you, in fact, frogs is their favorite because frogs have a lot of proteins for them to easily have venom. Venom is not specifically for humans, not for killing humans, but it is for hunting their prey. But however, what normally happens as the human beings normally fall into their gap. When you stay next to a swamp where, where, uh, where frogs are there and frogs come next to your home, snakes will come for the frogs. But in the process, might end up biting you. That is where the challenge that Ugandans are facing. Others are living next to swamps where there are frogs. And frogs will bring in snakes. Same thing with those who are living with the you're living with a, maybe you have a store in your house, rats will come in. So when rats come in, a snake will come for the rats and the process might end up biting you. Okay? Yeah. So, we shall only see those snakes. Okay. Can you proceed by this? Yeah. We have another unique, unique bird here. Oh, here we go. No, this is not a snake. Yeah, this is a bird. It's a bird. A bird that you can only, a bird that is called shoe bill oh i can see the, the 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 mouth or the beak is actually looking like a shoe 
Yes, when you literally look at the shoes that we normally wear, it looks like the big. That is why it's called shoe bill. Shoe bill is a bird that is um, it's only uh, it's only in five countries in Africa where you can find them, and Uganda has the highest number of shoe bill. For all the um, the bird lovers, those who love seeing birds, or the omnivo the, the people who love uh, to see birds, this is one of the birds that you cannot come and miss to see. When you don't come to Uganda and miss to see this bird, believe me, you are not a bird. Okay. So basically, this one is in captivity and it has been um, rescued from 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 a place called Makanaga and was brought here. Okay. So that people can have a glance of glance of this. Okay. So what mainly it eats? It's fish, and fish will always give it uh, one fish after two days. One fish after two days. Yes. Today when you give it, tomorrow you skip, then you give it the other day. Okay. When you look at the beak, at the end of the beak, it is a little sharp. Yeah. It really means so it's, it even has a claw and sharp. Yes. Yeah. It gets the fish and it tries to kill it and swallow it the way it is. They ever big the fishes? Yes, they have to swallow it the way it is. To first try to make it little soft, then to, to swallow it. Okay. Wow. Not only that, not only that, these birds are believed to be uh, ever since the dinosaur areas. Eras, they have always been there. Why? There are more of the the actually okay, the beaver is the only living dinosaur. Why? Because of the size and all that. So they have. A cluttering sound that is what we call cluttering. It is a form of communication that these birds do. Okay, wow. Okay, so believe me, in Uganda, where you can always see them, especially next to you, in Tebe, it's a place called uh, Mabamba. Mabamba is where you can sight these birds. So maybe in our next export, we can go and look for the one in the wild. And we live alone the one of captivity, which is that specific because the center is meant to rescue. But so these are the ones that are rescued. But the ones in the wild, probably we shall go one day to Mabamba and we'll go and see this bird hunting by its own. Mm. Okay? Yeah. There is a, these are couples. There's one pair of your post. There's one here which is literally alone. Over here. This is the one which is just alone. It doesn't have a pair. Okay? So, shoe bill. You can see the crest, very unique, but to mm. Uganda. Believe yeah. me, even our neighboring countries don't have them. Uganda has it. Wow. So if you're a tourist and you want to come to Uganda, I believe by now you have got a tour guide. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are still more to see. All right. So uh, here we are having more of uh, monkeys. And uh, right over here, one of the monkeys that is literally very common in the, um, in Uganda it is called olive baboon olive baboon is uh, is locally we know it as nkobe nkobe it is in a in a, in, a, in, a, in a language called luganda okay so you always see them especially when you're going to to Maxion falls Maxion falls is one of the national parks in Uganda so going heading northward of Uganda so you always see them. Another place you always see them, okay? But the only problem with them, they are very, very aggressive. And when you're in your car and you, your windows are down, they might enter your car and pick whatever they want. Whatever food you have in the car, they will pick and go with it. And you will do nothing about it. Why? Because they are little, very aggressive. You can see how it's becoming friendly. So this one here is called Nguji. It's a male one. Mm. Okay? So they are actually called vermin, vermin animals. They have, when they come to your plantations and they want to eat sweet potatoes, and maybe you have planted, cast, uh, you have planted maybe maize, mm. they'll get annoyed and uproot everything that you have planted to teach you that next time plant what you want, not what you want. <laughs> that is how, that's why people in Uganda are actually killing them. The others that are eating them, that is the only challenge they are facing. Okay? Okay, so this one is a female, which is on the heat, that's why you're seeing the, the behind is uh, looking reddish in color. Okay. So good at climbing. Very, very good at climbing. Okay, and that one uh, here, they, they, they call her Angela. Angela, Angela. 
So that is Angela, the one who is coming, and uh, she has a uh, very bad manner. She will always show you the buttocks. <laughs> this is the behavior that he has developed doing that. What does that mean now? Uh, you know, animals in captivity are always go through a level of, uh, of, uh, of stress. It's actually a level of stress because of the small environment. They are, they are, they are, they are into a very small. Uh, they are confined in this very small environment. So they will always develop uh, uh, behaviors that are inhuman, like so. The other animals we are going to see are running up and down running up and down, pacing up and down because of their stress. But in the wild, baboons will never do this. They don't do this. They don't they don't behave like the way this female is behaving. Okay. So we just associate it to stress. Okay? Yeah. So what we are seeing Right from over there, that is a giraffe, uh, specifically Rothschild giraffe. That's the giraffe that we have here. And uh, in Uganda, we have uh, up to three national parks that are having these giraffes. That is one of them is a uh, Maxon Falls National Park, where you can see these giraffes. Quite very many of them. And also we have uh, Kidepo Valley National Park. And the very last one is uh, Lake Mburu National Park, where they were just, they just introduced them to the park. So these uh, giraffes that we have here, uh, these are one of the, actually it is the tallest uh, land mammal that you can ever see in a beautiful country like Uganda. And uh, you will always see them browsing. Browsing I mean they are eating things that are up. And in the wild they will always eat acacia leaves. Acacia leaves is actually comprised of leaves and hooks. Not, not hooks, they are called what? Uh, stones. Yeah. Okay. So as they are eating stones, these animals, this giraffe is so accurate in a way that as it, um, it is wrapping its tongue around the acacia, it will pick the leaves without the stones sprinkling its lips, its, its, uh, its, its tongue, sorry. Okay. So that's how accurate the giraffe can be. However, here in the zoo, what, they are, what we have actually done, these are not acacia trees, because acacia trees we don't have them around here but they normally give them just leaves specific leaves for them to be eating okay did you know that giraffe has uh, up to around uh, 11 that its heart weighs up to 11 kilograms only the heart only the heart 11 kilograms why is that so now why is, is the giraffe having up to around 11, 10 to 11 kilograms of the heart why because the heart has to be so strong to pump blood up to the top of the head and up to the bottom of the foot. That's why it has to be having a very strong heart. Okay? That's why you always see it. As it is moving, it will be, you know, pumping blood and all that. Okay? Not only that, they also have, their skull is, uh, it has a, a horn on top. The horn is connected to the skull. Oh. So when you see it very well, it has that horn you can see from, I don't know if you can see it from far. Yeah. So those horn is connected to the, to, the, to the skull, okay, which is actually very unique. And when you see them, those are the ones that normally use for fighting, to fighting with the other males. However, here we don't have, we have only the young male, okay, I don't know where it is right now. It's the other side. Oh, the other side, I don't know whether my camera can see it. The other side, if you look at my finger, there are two actually. Oh, wait, those are zebras. Those are zebras. Those are zebras. Oh, there's one. There's one female here. Then the baby, I'm not seeing it. Okay, but still, when you see them in a park, you'll always see them do what we call necking. Necking is when giraffes fight with their neck. They normally swing their necks to fight the other. Why they are fighting is maybe dominance of the male. Because giraffes live in a group, and in the group, there's always supposed to be one male dominating. So you always see them fighting, maybe the dominance. Of the of the of the group of the herd, so that one male can take over the pride. Okay, but here I've never seen them fight. Why? Because this is maybe a captivity, and there's just only one big male. Okay, so but the male here here in the zoo they happen to be naming their male. That male is called Seguya. Mm. Seguya is the name of uh, an individual in mm. Uganda who was among the 
the UWA staff, Uganda Wildlife Authority. Mm. He was the one, uh, the, the, the managing director of ED, executive director of UWA, some time back. So they named him after this giraffe. Okay, then this is the female, we'll call him North. Why North? Because we got him from the northern sector of Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth has two sectors, the northern sector and the southern sector. So we named him, we named her North because we got her from the northern sector of Queen Elizabeth. So you, when you go to a national park like Queen Elizabeth, you can definitely see these animals. One unique thing that I never told you about it, when you see a giraffe moving, two sides of their legs moved uh, move together like the in front legs and the behind legs move proportionally together like so oh i wish you could see it i moving. saw it moving but i didn't notice that ah, i wish you noticed that okay so giraffes are literally very unique but and which i believe every tourist should come inside this okay not only that one thing that we share in common with the giraffe is they have uh uh, up to human beings will have up to seven uh, bones this one next to our neck here mm. they're called the back bones neck mm. bones maybe neck bones neck bones yes here we have them we have seven of them and the they have seven that's one thing we share in common with them wow, wow. okay let me see if you have something else it is struggling to stand up is that, is that all the struggles it has to go through to stand up? Uh, most of the times, uh, elephants rarely go down. Why? Yeah. Because they are fancy. He had to sleep uh, next to a landing area. But still, uh, elephants are one of the, it's actually the biggest uh, land mammal. So for, for it can weigh up to between mm, between between four four three to four tons. That is like four thousand kilograms. Four thousand kilograms. Yes, that's how heavy they can become. But uh, here we only have two elephants. The other one we shall not be able to see. But here the one we are having is is uh, specifically. Uh, one only and we have two species of elephants in Uganda we have a savanna elephant which is this one here the savanna elephant. savanna elephant then we have the forest elephant okay oh uh, and one of them that we have savanna elephants you'll always find them in the national park like Queen Elizabeth National Park I was mm. there last week mm. last week on Sunday and we are able to see one of the savanna elephants. Believe me, the savanna elephant is quite big. When you, when you see even the tusk, the tusk, it will be very, very long. That's when you can tell that this one is a fully... The tusk elephant. is that thing that it uses to hold food? No, 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 no. Um, for lack of better word, you can use teeth. Oh. Teeth, that is the tusk. Okay? The one you're talking about is the trunk. It's called a trunk. Yes, the trunk is that long thing. The one that it uses to hold food, it does. Okay? So in Queen Elizabeth, that's where you can find, even in the Maxim Falls, you'll find savanna elephants. Actually, okay. it's eating. I wanted to, but it, it, the, its standing posture cannot allow me to to okay. really record okay. the way it's eating. It is, yeah. it is eating from, you might not be able to see. Mm. Okay. But in Queen Elizabeth, they have that, uh, uh, they have a problem is they go to the communities and eat people's uh, people's plantations. They're going to and eat all your carrots or all your sweet potatoes. So what communities have done or what the UWA, Uganda Wildlife Authority have done, has dug trenches. You can see even the same thing we have done here, down here. Mm. They have dug a trench all throughout up behind there. So that the elephant does not come. When it see, fears a, a trench. Yes, it knows that when I fall down there I will not I will not wake up. But still, these animals are very, very brave. They, what they normally do in the park, they normally step down there so that the mud can fill the gap and they cross over. Same thing what it did here. You can see over there, mm. it, has, that it has stepped there so it's going to fill the gap here so that it can easily cross. Before this trench, you will always come beside and you find it chilling this way, which is very bad. Okay? So in the park, what they have done, they have done like a two things. 
one of them is digging a trench in a park like so and the other one they use red pepper what you call pepper mm. red pepper you know elephant has um its sense of smell is a hundred times better than the one of human beings mm. sense of smell so when you put a red pepper for example in a wire like this and it comes and smells it will run into a different direction and will never come back why because the sense of smell is very good not only that even uh the, the it has a very good sense of memory remember it is a one of the mammal one of the mammals that can easily remember someone even after 15 years why because it, its brain it is the brain itself weighs up to around six kilograms. The brain weighs six kilograms. Only the brain is around six kilograms. That really means it can easily remember someone even after 15 years. Wow. So in the park, you'll always see a group of them, a herd of them moving, moving together because they move in a family. And the gestation period, do you know how long it can take for the pregnancy? No. That is uh, 22 months. It is one year and ten month pregnancy and to give birth to one elephant. Doesn't give birth to twins? No, just one. Okay. But however in the zoo here what they have done, uh, because they have only rescued one, uh, so we had to put a zebra with it to keep company. The zebra is keeping company. But it is chasing away the zebra? Yes, because of food. You know, food can... It is very mean. It's becoming mean. <laughs> <laughs> but in the park, believe me, you always find a very hard of them, a very big hard of, of, of elephants moving together. And I can see a monkey up. Oh, yeah. That monkey is also a unique to Uganda. It's called the Patas monkey. Patas monkey? Yes, Patas monkey. Very common when you visit uh, a Maxim Falls National Park, you always see those monkeys. They're called the Patas monkeys. Okay, one thing maybe I will tell you about uh, the zebra that we have in the in the Uganda here. We have uh, common zebras, what is called a Bashel zebra. And zebras, when you look at their pattern, it is just like our fingerprints. The fingerprints are different. Our fingerprints of human beings are different from each other. Mm. Same thing with the zebras; their patterns are different from the other. Okay. Mm. Those question, colorings, what yes, they call pattern? The coloring, those patterns, the black and white. Mm. One question I'll pose to our viewers, mm. I'll ask, I'll pose a question. Is the zebra black with white stripes or white with black stripes? A question for you to think of, <laughs> which I also... Uh, Maybe let, let them put the <laughs> comment, I mean, uh, leave their comment on, yes, you can on leave the your comment, comment section. Is the zebra white with black stripes or white with black? Eh? Is the zebra black with white stripes or white with black stripes? Think about it and leave your comment below. As for now, let's go and see another animal. Okay. This over there where you see, that is what we call chimpanzee. You know, chimpanzees among chimpanzees are what we call apes. We have different species of apes, and one of them is the chimpanzees. We have gorillas, we have uh, bonobos, uh, we have bush babies, and all apes. Uh, actually, we even have human beings. We are also part of the family. What makes them different from monkeys is they don't have tails. Same thing with yeah. us. Human, we don't have this tails. one. They don't have tails. They don't have tails. That's why they are called apes. And in fact, they have advanced brain. When you look at their brain, it's more advanced. In fact, the DNA of chimpanzees share a DNA with us 98.7. I didn't know that. 98.7 percent DNA human. So that really means whatever a chimpanzee can do, you can also do. Apart from a few few things. For example, you can see how it is seated. It got scared because of a bird. I think there was someone making noise there. Oh. Some, some noise is coming from there. So, these, these are more like human beings and they will always have tools. They will always develop tools that a human being can. For example, when something falls in the water, they don't swim, remember. They will always go and break a tree and try to pick something in the water. Why they are brain is more advanced. The way they take care of their young ones, 
it is exactly the way human beings take care of their young ones. Okay? Mm. Chimpanzees in uh, in Uganda you will always find them in uh, in places like um, Chibale. Chibale Chibale National Park is known as the primate capital. Why primate capital? That's why you can find a lot of uh, primates. One of the primates is like I told you, the chimpanzees. You can also find a lot of monkeys that we saw earlier on. You can find them there. Another national park where you can find another primate is a uh, is windy. Bwindi Impenetrable National Park. Bwindi Impenetrable National Park is, did you know that Uganda has 50%, 50, a half of the world gorillas in Uganda? It's in Uganda. In Uganda. A half of the world mountain gorillas are in Uganda. And people all there, I don't know. Why? Because, because you, we are not so much uh, advertising Uganda, but today I'm telling you in this video that Uganda has more than a half of the world mountain gorillas <coughs> okay and when you come to uganda believe me you'll always see these gorillas in their natural habitat okay not only that we also have a golden monkey golden monkey, a golden monkey in, no. in the national park called mugahinga national park i never told the beginning we have up to around 10 national parks in uganda out of the 10 national parks, we also have the 12 game reserves in Uganda and all these national parks are unique in its own way just like I told you the only national park where you can see the mountain gorillas it is in the Bundi. okay when you want to see uh, chimpanzees you will always come to Chibale National Park where you can find chimpanzees this one is in captivity but in Uganda you cannot see another place you can also see in Queen Elizabeth they also have chimpanzees there okay so chimpanzees are very interesting animals it is like seeing, having a reflection <coughs> of yourself. Okay, but however here what they are normally doing, what they are feeding them with, they are feeding them with things like, like uh, cassava, sweet potatoes, bitter apples, eggplants, pumpkins, poshos, eggs, boiled eggs. Why boiled eggs? Because we have to, um, we have to, we have to, uh, eggs contain all the food values, like mm -hmm. proteins and all that. Remember, in the wild, they also eat monkeys. Remember us talking about the black and white colobus monkey? Mm. Yes, they eat those monkeys. These ones yes, eat they another eat those monkey. monkey. They eat those monkeys just to, because those monkeys contain a lot of proteins. But here in the wild, we don't give them live animals. We don't give them, um, uh, uh, we don't give them a chance to hunt for those monkeys. So what we normally do, we give them eggs. Eggs contain all the food values. That's what we normally give them, the boiled eggs. Not only that, we also give them porridge. Boiled take porridge. Porridge. When it is hot. When it is lukewarm, not necessarily hot, but when it's lukewarm, in a cup. So they will drink. In case there is no sugar, they will not take. Okay, but that is in the captivity. But in the wild, they don't eat those things. What they normally eat is more of insects. They eat monkeys. They eat leaves and all that. Okay. So here we are. We are now seeing up to around four of them. You can see how they are. There are six. There are six. Mm -hmm. There's one behind there, which is there doing, are two. Doing, two behind. Okay. There's one over here doing cross leg. Oh yeah, yeah. This is how human beings sit mm -hmm. doing cross leg. The other two behind there, they are very old, born of 1989. 1989. It's around 54, 56 years old. So chimpanzees can live up to the age of 60 years. In fact, in a zoo here we had a chimpanzee called Zakayo. Mm -hmm. Zakayo that died at the age of 54, from 1963 to 2018. So he died at the age of 54, okay? However, in the world, we shall always be seeing these chimpanzees, okay? Recently, one week ago, I went to Renzori National Park looking for chimpanzees. And unfortunately, I was not able to see, but believe me, there are other places where you definitely will see massive chimpanzees, Chiba mm. National Park. Queen Elizabeth in, in, in Kabuga Lodge. Okay, so you'll always be seeing those chimpanzees. Okay? Yeah. Udo. Udo. So, an owl is uh, one of the birds that we, we have in Uganda. However, we have a myth about all owls. 
all all uh, Ugandans or generally Africans perceive them as a bird of luck. Mm. That is the only problem that we perceive them. Why? Because most people, most people, when they hear the, the call of an owl, they will think they will, they will perceive that the next day someone is going to die. Mm. That is why most people are killing are killing this bird, the owls. We have very many species of owls, up to around nine species. Especially these owls. Hope mm. this one is still young. This is what we call African wood owl. Yes, wood owl. So still chick. Still chick. Still six months old. Okay. And they are what we call nocturnal birds. Nocturnal birds. That means it is, you see them in the late evening and night hour that's when they are very very active okay african wood owls it's very very interesting and you can see how it is very calm it has no problem okay so mm. for everyone who wants to see a bird like an owl we are always advised in uganda to look for them at night so that's why he is here he was rescued from the wild okay his parents were killed by villagers. Mm. Yeah, and his nest fell down. Fell down. So yeah. that's why. Uh, where, where did he rescue from again? Uh, it was rescued from the village, and mm. the, yeah. the nest was stone. Ah. Yeah. So there, this there, bird. There, there, <laughs> there is one also we rescued from botanical garden. I was budding, oh. then it fell. It fell from a tree. Oh. And it fell from a tree. Uh, I wanted to bring so it in the wake and they were like, ah, you know what we should do? Mm -hmm. We put it there, mm -hmm. then we uh, shall check for it in the evening. So in the evening when it came back, they are really gone. Okay. So Mother, it was okay. <laughs> the parent. Yeah, <laughs> the parent maybe came and picked it. Mm. So. So, that is what we call rhinos. You see, in Uganda, rhinos is what we call, we have very many cultures in Uganda, over 54 different cultures in Uganda, and they have different ways how they call it. Specifically in the central here, we call it Enkula. But when you go to northern Uganda, they call it Amuha. Okay, specifically in Uganda, this is what they, they treasure so much, especially among the Langis. Mm -hmm. The Langis is where I come from. We treasure these animals so much, they are called Amuha. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when you see a flag of people coming from Uganda, you always see them having the, 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 the photo of, of Amuha, of the rhino. Mm -hmm. Now, in Uganda, uh, in 1980s, we used to have over 600 rhinos, and most of them were in the northern part of Uganda, and that is on the Shidepo Valley and Makshon, over 600. But um, because of the demand for their horns, if you can look very well, you can see the horns, two horns, one long one and one short one so people used to demand for their horns so that they can sell them to the outside environment to the asians asians specifically the chinese so by 1960s we had zero rhinos and specifically we had two species of rhino that is the northern white rhinos and the black rhinos okay so when the all the rhinos were hunted by 1980s we had zero so through the effort of the government in 2000, between 1999, 1998, around 2003, rhinos decided to reintroduce rhinos in Uganda. And as I speak right now, we have now the, uh, the southern white rhinos. These are the southern white rhinos, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. which we got from uh, Kenya. Kenya gave it, as, gave it to, to the institution, to the zoo in 2003, up to date they are here. But however, in a place called uh, Ziwa Rhino Sanctuary, as you're heading northward, going to Makshan Falls National Park, you are able to see rhinos. They have over 38, 39 species of, they have over 39 rhinos in the, in the, in the camp, in the Ziwa Rhino Sanctuaries. Mm. So, it really means that Uganda, we, you can no longer see any rhino in the wild. All the rhinos we have are in the captivity and they are being protected. In case you are got with the horn of a rhino in Uganda, it's equivalent to killing a human being. So you can be put to life in prison. Okay? So in case you want to see a rhino in Uganda, two places. The zoo here and in Ziwa Rhino Sanctuary. Okay? 
why people were hunting for them, especially the 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 the, 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 Indi the, the Ugandans were selling them for their horns because they believed that the horns had a healing property. That's why they are hunting for the horns. Okay, simply because they had. But the truth is, they have what you call keratin. Keratin is the same. It's the same. Um, uh, uh, it's the same thing that is forming our nails, our hair. The same thing that these these horns have. They have that keratin. Okay, but they don't have any healing, any healing, any healing ingredients in them. Okay. So believe me, today we are going to see all the five big fives. And so far we have seen the buffalo, we have seen a lion, we have seen a rhino. Now we are remaining with the. Uh, with the leopard, oh, we're not meaning with one, only the leopard, because we also said the elephant. Mm. So we're only with one last big five. In Uganda, you can spot all the big fives, but not in a national park, not in one national park, but in different, different national parks. Okay? Yeah. Yes. So, uh, what you just saw from there, those are what we call impalas. They are among, uh, Impalas are among the antelopes. You know we have different different antelopes and this is among them, the impalas. Now one thing that uh, and I want the world out there to know is that the capital city of Uganda is called Kampala. And Kampala came from the word impala. Very many years ago uh, when we had the king of Buganda. King of Buganda the one was uh, you know you, you, Kampala was sitting on the, um, up to around seven hills. Out of the seven hills, most of the hills were filled with, with impalas, the animals we just saw right behind there. So the Kavaka and, and the community around used to hunt for these impalas so that, uh, so that they can have something to eat. So uh, when the English, the British, the colonial government by then came in, uh, that is when uh, they started now calling Kampala as the hill of impalas. So as Muzungu was, as the white man was communicating to the African, was saying the hill of Impalas, the hill of Impala. That is where the name Kampala, coming from the word Impala, came about. That's why you know it as Kampala, Impala. Okay. So in Uganda, as I speak right now, you only find the Impalas in only one national park, and that is in Lake Mboro National Park. That is the only place where you can find the Impalas. Okay. <coughs> when you go to other national parks, definitely you can't see it. Okay, so that's what makes uh, Lake Mburu National Park very unique. That's what makes Kampala itself very unique because of these impalas. One thing that is you know how you can tell a difference from that in impala and the cob. People confuse impalas and cobs. Okay, the cob. Yes, <coughs> one of the difference is when you look at the, the impala very well, behind it it has a black mark running from the, from the behind. That black mark is, is what differentiated from the, the cob. The cob does not have that black mark. Even in terms of size, uh, a cob has a very long horn and also the size is slightly bigger than the impala. That's how you can tell it's between a cob and an impala. Okay? So the only challenge they're also facing in, uh, in the national park is people are hunting for them and there are a lot of people are killing them so they can consume them. That's one of the challenges they are facing. But um, for you to see these animals, Uganda is the best place yeah. for you to be. That's true. Mm. My name is Chen Daniel Alan, and uh, I work with, uh, with the I work with a company that is called Badas Lens. Badas Lens is a tour company based in Uganda, and. Uh, Basically, what normally do we we, we we based on uh, mammals, birds itself, uh, reptiles, and anything that concerns Uganda, including the culture. That's what we normally do. Okay, suppose I'm a, a tourist from the west. What? And I want to come to Africa. Why do you think I should choose Uganda? Yeah, I, I, uh, I, and leave the other countries. Uh, why you should choose Uganda? First of all, you should know that Uganda is known as the Pearl of Africa. That literally means that we are blessed. To, we are blessed to have everything that every tourist should have. 
all the mammals that you should think of to have them. Did you know that we have 10 national parks in Uganda and all the national parks are unique in its own? The other one that we shall be seeing earlier on is what we call a showbiz, unique to Uganda. We have also what we call a crested crane, which is also very unique back in Uganda. So Uganda literally we have even the, the culture, all the cultures we have done are different from the other. A lot to be learned, which other countries might not be offering. And uh, what about this? This, what we are seeing over here, this is the, the biggest freshwater lake in Africa and the second in the world. This is called Lake Victoria. Okay? It, is, uh, it covers up around three uh, countries, which is Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. Okay? So, fresh as it is, you can have a big line over here, and also you can eat a fish that you have just picked from the water and you put in your plate. I actually saw some people eating fish there. Yes. That's now, a restaurant. That is a restaurant and the fish that they just, they just from eating it was picked from this place. So this is something that everyone should enjoy. Uganda is unique. Everyone should know that. And the source of the And knife. also we have uh, the longest, uh, the longest uh, river in Africa. That's called the River Nile. Running from Jinja, which is in Uganda, up to uh, Egypt, where it is. Uh, where it is delta, where it is long from Egypt to from Uganda to Egypt, the longest longest um, river in, the, in Africa. Now, uh, now that uh, we have known what Uganda offers, yes. what is the best time to visit Uganda and? Uh, what is the the cost? Like how heavy or should my pocket be? Uh, the best time to visit Uganda, just like I told you before, Uganda has two seasons, the wet season or dry season. So any time is the best time to visit Uganda. For example, if you want to visit the, the mountain gorillas, uh, any time is the best for you. You can go and see the mountain gorillas any time. If you want to see the birds, any time can work out for you. And specifically for you who might be interested in culture, anytime you can come and experience the different cuisines, the different uh, food that Ugandans eat, uh, anytime can be the best. Either it's in January or February. When it comes to the coast, I think I will refer you to my to our website, the Badas Lens. Uh, you can actually see our coast on the details, the details on depending on the days, uh, the days that you want. Everything is in the, in, the, in the website. So, what is the name of the website? Uh, the website is you can just have www.badaslens.com. Okay, you see, many people in the West are always scared of uh, uh, security and where to stay in Uganda. They think Uganda there are no beautiful houses, hotels, and so can you clarify something on that and food food yeah now when it comes to uh, where to stay in uganda you shouldn't be worried in entebbe uh, we have very beautiful accommodations three, ta three stars four stars accommodations uh, where you can find these cheap cheaply cheaply you can actually find them one of them is serena you can actually sleep in serena serena hotel you can sit in hotel horizon which is just here in entebbe and when it, when it comes to uh, in the national parks, we have we have uh, budget, we have budget accommodation, we have mid range, and we have luxury accommodations. All this you can actually find in these national parks. For example, for those who want who want maybe uh, budget, you can always sleep in Red Chill, Red Chill, which is an accommodation found in Maxwell, found in Queen. All this you can actually find. When it comes to food, food is I would say Uganda is place that we. We, our food, we get it from soil. We don't spray our food. So that really means you are eating something which is fresh. If you are eating an orange, you are eating an orange which is picked from a tree, not sprayed. Okay? I've told you that we, our, our Uganda, Uganda is crossed by an equator. That means we, the environment is very, very convenient to everyone, believe me. So when it comes to food, do not worry, we got you covered. And, uh, and uh, all this you can find in 
uh, in, in those accommodations or even you can find in the streets. Do they also offer foreign food like? Yes, foreign foods, Indian foods, uh, all those kind of foods you can actually find. Actually, the hotel, that the, the, the restaurant we are just next to, just up here, it also has that kind of food which can be afforded by everyone. And then what about those with families? Those with families, yes, when you have a family, believe me, you can still visit uh, uh, this, uh, this national park. Just book, when you book, you, and you also tell us what kind of food, like, because we have clients that always come and maybe they are vegetarians, so they want to eat only vegetables. Those ones, you are sorted out. Others, they also want to try something new. So when you come with your family, you have to let us know what exactly you want, so that we can meet your needs. Okay. Yeah, yeah. T t talking about trying some something new. Mm. What are some of the new and unique foods in Africa, in Uganda? Uh, in Uganda, there is what we call uh, uh, chiko mando. Chiko mando is a mix of chapatis. Chapatis, chapati is a mix of flour and uh, and more of oil to make something they call it chapatis. So you mix chapatis and uh, and beans. Beans is um, like a, some small seed like this that normally eat. So the mix like this, we call it chikomando. That's what you, another thing that you can always experience. The other one, which is also unique, is uh, is uh, is Rolex. Rolex actually comes from the word rolling eggs. Okay, so when you roll eggs and chapati, we call it Rolex. That's a common food that is unique to Ugandans. Not only that, we have what we call it locally. We know it as akel. Akel is commonly with people from the north that you can always enjoy. Unique food, but believe me, you'll not have any stomach complications. In fact, you'll eat more and more of them. What about kalo and, and smashed yes. matoke? Kalo and matoke, basically, matoke will talk about it. Matoke is another one. Matoke is one of the food that you always find with uh, any part of the country where you go. Whether you're in the central here or you're in the west, matoke is commonly consumed. Believe me, you'll enjoy it. What about uh, how fit should someone be before visiting Uganda? Uh, fit that will depend. For safari. Fit depend. I would say it depends where you're going. If, for example, you're going to Renzori Mountains National Park. I was in Renzori just two weeks ago, and we are going to hike. That really means we are supposed to be fit. For you to hike any mountain, you're supposed to be physically fit. Do a little bit of uh, exercise, and so that you don't get muscle pulls when you're when you're hiking and hill. So that one at least you're supposed to be at least. Uh, fit enough to hike. But when it comes to other national parks like Queen Elizabeth or Maxion, that's why you'll be in a more of a car. You'll be doing a game drive. So even for someone who is disabled can still go and do a game drive. Why? Because you'll be in a car. So that one you're still sorted out. So the other question is is Uganda safe for tourists? Uh, 100%. I'm talking about kidnapping, uh, violence, and uh, or maybe rebels or anything like that. Uganda is one of the most safest places where you can be. Why am I saying this? For any tourists that come in Uganda, you are supposed to book through a recognized, uh, is a recognized, recognized facility, recognized tour company. So when you book with a company, the company is known by Uganda Tourism Board. So when they go to a park, they are supposed to be given a ranger. This ranger is, is in charge of your security. Your security is where you are going. The ranger is actually having a gun to make sure you are protected until you leave that specific destination. That literally means Uganda is 100% very safe. Okay? And the people that are in charge are called UWA, Uganda Wildlife Authority. They are ones in charge of keeping the animals and also keeping the tourists who are stepping into the country. Okay, now that you have answered the, all our questions, yes. uh, I think um, for the viewers, if you have any question, you can put it down on the comment section below. We shall answer it. But for now that he has answered all that I have in mind, what is the name of your company and uh, possibly you can give us your uh, like website, email address or even okay. telephone number so that uh, 
and you also tell us what you know i think you told us that but you can just uh, uh, repeat it again okay the company that currently i'm working with is called badas lens of which i'm among the managing director badas lens is a is a is a company that we one of the things that caught much of our attention is is a, is a parrot Okay, that's why when you see the badness, you always see a parrot or just somewhere up there, some on, the, on our logos. So, uh, badass lens, we, we basically measure in birds, mammals, reptiles, and culture in general. So, you can always find us in our, our website, which is www.badasslens.com, and uh, you'll basically be sorted out to all your adventures within Uganda. So basically, like you said, you telephone you, number. Yeah, what about the telephone number? Because mm. I'm sure many people who come to Uganda they need a tour guide, and yes. sometimes they don't have uh, access to 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 one. Okay. So our country code is uh, plus two five six. So it is plus two five six seven triple five six zero. Six six three. I repeat, uh, plus two five six seven triple five six zero six six three. That's is how it, you can contact me as an individual. Is it on WhatsApp? Yes, it is on WhatsApp. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video from the beginning up to the end. It has been really an interesting story. Personally, I learned a lot. I really learned a lot. There are so many things I didn't know that I learned today. Uh, I would do personally recommend him as a tour guide in case you want to come to Uganda. He knows a lot. He didn't tell you much because as you can see the video is already long. Yeah, yeah it's already long. But when you meet him personally, I'm sure you will love him. He's a cool person. I think you have seen it. Mm -hmm. His personal contact is there. So anytime you are coming to Uganda, you can contact him. Surely, if you are interested in his area, like he told you, you will surely enjoy your stay. You can as well visit his website, www.badaslens.com. You will find all that you need to know uh, from the cost, uh, accommodation, safari, Uganda safari, and everything that you need to know. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.